a friendship forged in music, a partnership in its fourth decade, a lifetime in pursuit of the perfect song, and a community built along the way. 14 studio albums and another one in the wings. The band is Sky Diggers. This is Employee of the Myth. Episode 8, Just Another Lucky Day. And now, in conversation with Jane Gowan of the Music Buddy Podcast, Andy Mays and Josh Finlayson, Sky Diggers. Would you consider this to be a post-pandemic song? Is it an anti-Trump song? It seems to be calling out a lot of interesting things. Yeah, I'd say it's, I I would say it's uh, uh, stuck in the middle of the, of the pandemic song where the uh, the former president is still uh, dominating headlines and uh, and displaying a a tragic lack of empathy and logic and all of the things that one really requires to be an effective leader and you know resulting in people like Anthony Fauci getting harassed no oh, not just harassed Endlessly. death threats death threats it's Unbelievable. Yeah. And you couldn't turn on the TV without seeing something about it, so or read the newspaper or yeah. it was it was just yeah, it just got into my head a little bit too much. Seems to be a battle of the heroes and the brutes. Yeah. I, you know, I said to Josh the other uh, when we were we just were running over it the other day. I said, you know, the first verse is already out of date, <laughs> uh, which is always the uh, possibility when you write something that's uh, ripped from the headlines of the day. It was just frustrating to watch people kind of battle each other over things that at some point, you know, you have the uh, pursuit of uh, life, liberty, and happiness versus peace, order, and good government, which, uh, you know, I think at some point the community has to take precedence over the individual uh, in certain situations, not all the time, yeah. but certainly in in that situation, we were dealing with it as a community. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I guess that was a little frustrating. That Yeah. And this is a personal question, but did either of you ever, did you, either of you... Did either of you encounter problems with any acquaintances or friends as a result of the anti-vax movement? Yeah. And I, how, I, I how was that? I didn't really. I mean, very early on, I just thought it was a, a personal decision. I think that was was up to the individuals. But I also understand why, on a community level, why, why people who were unprepared to participate in the com- or in what the community felt was best for the community mm-hmm. were then prevented from doing certain things like yes. i if i hadn't been vaccinated initially i couldn't have gone to see my 96 year old mother so it was you know that was just a decision it it wasn't a decision because i needed to see my mother she needed to see someone from her family mm-hmm. um so you know things things like that but it certainly got a, a lot more uh, heated than I think it needed to be. Did you have any encounters, Josh, that you're willing to talk about in that respect? Or, um, you know, it, it it just seems like it's now in the rearview mirror as mm-hmm. well. And I mean, I understand everyone's entitled to make their choices in life. And I, uh, but you know, I often think of uh, it's a it's, it was from an interview Ricky Gervais did. And he, t- it was a, it was a science show of all things that he was on. I don't know if it was a podcast or what it was, but mm. he said, uh, you know, when did opinion become fact? And I just thought, wow, you know, like, and and I and I, I feel like social media and you know a twenty four hour news cycle sort of heightens people's ability to come to conclusions without really understanding everything and and we're all guilty of that no one's exclusively uh guilty of that you know uh, but i just now feel like the worst of it is behind us and the 
calling anyone out or shaming anyone or whatever is yeah. there what's the point you yeah. know like it's uh totally. we all are all entitled to make our own decisions and yeah. as long as you're you're not imposing your will on someone else i i i won't take exception i may disagree with them but uh i want to take, take exception to that yeah that's nice but during the pandemic skydiggers came up with a lot of alternative ways of delivering the goods to the people uh, delivering your songs, but uh, it, at the time when it first came, it must have really affected your touring schedule and your mm -hmm. your job, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, what happened? How did you deal with it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how everyone else did. <laughs> no, you did. Did you have to cancel a bunch of things? Oh yeah. Did you have to no, cancel? We dates? lost. Uh, yeah, we lost a, a year's w worth of work in uh, in about a week. You know, it was it, we lost a lot of money. I remember I had a ticket to that show. I think it was on March 13th or something. It was at... Oh, it's the 14th, yeah. The 14th. Saturday the 14th, celebrating the uh, the release on vinyl of our first record after 30 years, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And you later did that show at the Horseshoe. We did. Um, yeah. But that was such a tenuous moment. You were you were back and forth, and you were trying to get you know get the word out, saying, "Well, we might do it, we might not." Yeah. And then ultimately, you had to call it. Well, we you know we we thought we could go ahead with the show, and then you know, and we offered people uh, their their money back if they were uncomfortable. And then uh, a person wrote in saying, you know, I I would love to come, but I'm I'm the primary caregiver for my eighty something year old mother and mm -hmm. i i just i don't feel comfortable doing that and it was kind of like okay yeah yeah we can't do this yeah because that's that's who our audience is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. 80, 80 year old mothers <laughs> it just, no, it just, it, it's a niche you know, market it, it wasn't about us and it wasn't about yeah <laughs> uh, sorry yeah it sorry, just well, we realized one. it wasn't about us at right. that point but our esteemed producer over here joel stewart was telling me yesterday that toronto and i don't remember this toronto had the most intense lockdown of all cities in the world oh, is oh, yeah. that is yeah. that true yeah and so you know yeah. i said except for north korea don't know too much about it. <laughs> except for the unnamed korean country which i didn't realize but it, it it makes me think about you know toronto can be quite i don't know rule abiding sometimes mm -hmm. Is that the word? Anal. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's Toronto's history has been also quite conservative in the past, mm -hmm. right? You guys would know more about that. And it, it makes me think about your song on this album, A City Is Gone, but it also makes me think about your classic song, um, City of Sirens, mm -hmm. that you've recorded twice. You've recorded it once on the City of Sirens album right. from 2008, and once, Andy, on your solo. Yes, record the history yeah. of forgetting right yeah well city of sirens you know we used to live uh, in in a neighborhood where there was a you know there was a police station down the block and there was an ambulance station and and then there was a, a firehouse up uh, you know a couple blocks north and so literally you would hear sirens all day long mm -hmm. and then it it also it was kind of a metaphor for a time in our lives when you know you maybe you have children and you uh you just start to you s i think well certainly I, I went through a phase at a certain age where it's like is this all there is is this the you know is this what it's going to be like is this uh yeah so really the you know the the sirens were a metaphor for the you know the emotional panic or the anxiety that one can feel at certain points in a relationship or mm -hmm. uh yeah in a life where you wonder you know is this is this it yeah well would you play some of that song right now love to thank you to see Slow down my friend That's too much speed Now that you've tried 
to put it all behind you Something has died And I can't seem to find you I stumble home Unlock the door Climb the stairs to our bed where you're lying. Here in the city of sirens, I want to love you in silence. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thanks. Getting back to Just Another Lucky Day. On this song, Andy, it seems like you're singing in first person, but I was wondering, is it is it it's someone else's voice or does it switch back and forth between characters? And how did you manage all that when you were writing I this? Don't, I don't think there's a character. I think it's really just observation and then... You know, the first verse is is longer. I, you know, I was looking at just rhyming, you know, nation and masturbation and explanation and vaccination. And I was thinking of some of the Dylan songs where the, the verses are not any particular length because he's just going on and it's another line and then another line. And yeah. uh, it, it's, that's, that's really what I was thinking about. And, uh, like I say, you know, the, most of the rest of it is ripped from the headlines. Nice. Have you ever written a song just in one sitting, top to bottom, either of you? Not that I can think of. Yeah. I mean, maybe close in a couple of cases, but mm-hmm. but yeah. I'm always going back and changing. Like right up until we recorded, I would change words and change oh, really? things. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Like there's always something better Tinkering. or something different. Yeah. 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 Interesting. This is the only one in, in this group of six songs that was mixed by Chris Walla of Death Cab for Cutie fame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, on the previous six, there's a, a couple, two or three that he mixed, maybe. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to ask you about him. I mean, this this has a it's a wonderful arrangement of the song. You know, all the layering and each thing with its each instrument with its own voice and place. Great organ and guitar motifs throughout did you decide in advance which ones would be mixed by chris and which ones would be mixed by joby baker and how did you go about that no we didn't we didn't plan it because we uh recorded and mixed and actually even mastered everything with joby that was sort of part of the uh arrangement with him right you know it was i don't know it was probably 15 songs over the time that we had uh, spent with him. It was, a, it was a lot of material, and he did an amazing job. I think when we came back and we sort of sat with it for a while, we thought, well, yeah, you know, maybe it would be good to... Well, for instance, uh, uh, you know, Jesse sang on um, uh, Hide Your Light, and um, and we Aaron Aaron plays a guitar so Aaron Como plays a guitar solo on this song. But we also just thought, you know, sometimes it's good to, you know, have someone else that's outside of your, you know, the, you know, the bubble that made the recording. And uh, and I knew that, uh, you know, I'd worked with Chris uh, on one of Gord's records, mm-hmm. uh, Gord Downey's records, and. Um, was that the Grand Bounce? Grand Bounce, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was a great experience. And uh, he produced it, recorded it, produced it, and mixed it at the bathhouse. And, uh, and you know, he came out and did a few live shows with us over the course of that tour that we did together. 
And we were just talking about, yeah, who can we get to mix it? And I, I just said, oh, you know, I know Chris. He lives in, uh, he lives in Norway with his wife and their new son. And yeah. I reached out to him and I just said, we've got, you know, we just start. I think the first one we started with was uh, My City Is Gone. My City Is Gone. And he, I sent him the track and he said, oh, I love this. He, he's, uh, he's originally from Seattle, I think, but uh, uh, lives, had lived in Portland from, uh, and that's where he was living when I met him. And mm. he said, oh, it makes me think of Portland, this song. And, huh. and then, yeah, we sent him that one and we loved what he did. And not that we didn't love what Joby did. I mean, that, uh, you know, it, but it's just a fresh set of ears, uh, a fresh perspective and. Mm -hmm. Just something a little different. Then we did three or four others after mm -hmm. that. Muscle cars, Muscle cars. and hide your light. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then this was the last one. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I remember Andy saying, you know, like, he did a great job on this too. And uh, and we thought, yeah, you know, I think that's probably enough. Everything else sounds good. Mm -hmm. and sounds we can, great. We can, you know. It, and it was nice connecting with Chris in that way, and it's it is what's cool about the digital realm, you know. Like it's just so easy to do that, and so anyway, nice. there wasn't really a master plan. It was more like, well, what do you do? You think how much different do you think it would sound? Do you think it would be cool to try to get a different perspective on it? And yeah. I think it was a good call. You know, yeah, in, that was a great hindsight. call. And they all sit beside each other nicely Beautifully. on the record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all. It, it all worked out yeah. really well. What's it like, though? I mean, I seem to recall some story from the recording of The Ground Bounce where Chris Wallace said to Gord, OK, I've got the I've got the songs now. Don't call me. I'll call you and I'll I'll get back to you when, once I've mixed them all. So was it a similar process for this? And did, what's it like when you're sitting there waiting to hear the mix when the when the guy's in a different town? Uh, well, in the, I, I do remember Chris drove up from Portland in his minivan with like every instrument he'd ever owned in his life and his computer, and uh, and then drove back and mixed it. It's I think wow. in Gord's case, it I think it my memory was that it seemed to take forever, and he was starting to get a little uh, antsy about it. Uh, but in this case with us, it was, I don't remember feeling like we were waiting. Uh, I mean, he, he and his wife had just had a, a, a son, you know, mm -hmm. I think it, he was only a couple months old. And so, I mean, that, that, uh, you know, uh, but I don't, now I don't remember feeling and, like we were waiting. And we weren't long. working to any real specific deadline. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. it was fairly open-ended and we started this process last, probably at the end of last summer or mm -hmm. early last fall of, of remixing. And, you know, we would, we would get him to remix a song or two and then we'd sit on it for a while and then go, well, maybe we could ask him to do this song. So, yeah, yeah. so it kind yeah. of took us, you know, we weren't, like I say, we weren't working to any deadline. And mm -hmm. so it was all, it was all, it was all really positive. The record company wasn't breathing down your neck. <laughs> no, they were not. No. And that's latent recordings, right? Yeah. Michael yeah. Timmons yeah. label. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's it like working with him? Oh, it's fantastic. It's, awesome. it's yeah. been, it's been a, a really great experience for us. He's a friend and, and mm -hmm. a peer and, and you know he gets it. He gets it. He knows. He knows what's involved in making and putting out records. We've made a number of records with it, with Mike at uh, the Junkie Studio, and it's it's been nothing but positive. That's good. And he's a doer. Yeah. You know, he's a he's somebody who finishes what they start, and that in our field of endeavor is a very positive thing because sometimes you can get bogged down in your own mind True. and question what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So Mike's a finisher. Nice. Well, anything else you wanted to say about this song? Well, I think it something that kind you. of tickled us about it is, to to our ears, it sounds sort of like a classic Sky Diggers track. Aha. Uh -huh. And so that that kind of tickled us when we when we uh, when we were working on it with uh, with Joby, um, and Josh is playing uh, not only the guitars but the bass as well. Right. And so uh, it sounds to us like it, it's something we could have recorded 30 years ago. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The thing about your vocal delivery, I find, is that you're somehow able to sound like you're a little bit cutting. You're you're calling out a situation, but you're also still have that warmth going on and that positivity. Yeah. So how do you strike that balance when you're doing a vocal? I don't know. I mean, I had to change some of the lyrics in the last verse because uh, it got a little X-rated, but... Um, <laughs> 
but uh, that's what you get when you rhyme something with masturbation well yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it, it uh, i don't know it's it's definitely there's there's a lot of cut in there you know shame on you and that's on you and you know calling out somebody who ne never takes responsibility for for anything is a little bit like shouting into the wind though isn't it at the end of the day can be yeah sometimes i just shout at my phone <laughs> <laughs> at the news feeds <laughs> well moments like this when we're all together in this room at the woodshed is i consider that a lucky day for me so yeah, thank you um i'd be delighted to hear you play this one here today all right like lambs to the slaughter Leading all your sons and daughters On Fifth Avenue you shot her But the bush says, man, you got her Shame on you Just another lucky day for you Just another lucky day for you I don't know why you bother Trying to run for cover When you've screwed everybody over Most importantly, your lover That's on you Just another lucky day for you Just another lucky day for you Again Just another lucky day for you Just another lucky day Thank you. Wasn't that, wasn't that beautiful? Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> the album is called Bide Your Time. The band is Sky Diggers. And this has been Employee of the Myth. Employee of the Myth is hosted by Jane Gowan and recorded at Blue Rodeo's Woodshed Studio in Toronto, Ontario. The podcast is engineered by Tim Vesley, edited by Jane Gowan, and mixed by Tim Vesley and Jane Gowan. If you enjoyed this conversation, please rate, review, share, subscribe, and play it loud. My name is Joel Stewart. Thanks for listening. Don't look to me for the answer. I don't know nothing anymore. I'll do my best in the meantime And wonder what it's been for Je t'aime toujours, mon amour Je t'aime toujours, mon amour